Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 and the New Order mod as Vietka. Why did I wait so long to uh, fade from black? But either way, welcome back. It is the second episode. We shall continue along our tree. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, never mind, never mind. Now, we have some stuff here. I said I would do... Yeah, because we got hit with... Is that... Which is the one? Yeah, I need to do that one more time because we shouldn't have gotten hit for, from that. Like, basically... We, we in, the, in the previous episode, we were organising a trade deal, right, well, it was sort of a trade deal. We were trying to, to get our vodka into Brittany, and assumedly from Brittany, it would go worldwide. Brittany said no, and we lost economic strength because of that. Like, that's not how that works. Like, if, we, if they said yes, we would gain economic strength. If they said no, we shouldn't lose it, we just shouldn't get anything. So, and, and, and it wasn't even a small amount of economic strength we lost either. It was some economic strength, which is more. So I'm going to do this... Uh, liquidate state asset decision twice um, for free. I will be giving myself the political power uh, because it, that shouldn't have happened. That, that was weird. Uh, yeah, that's all fine. Ooh, we can reconnect more Soviet power grids. Please do so now. Very nice. Yeah, we're back to 10 production units. What happened? Did someone, someone trade? Someone's trading with us. Okay. okay. Um, we did this. We did. That's fantastic. Now, all right. I honestly think we should invest this 158 million. Investing 158 million dollars into a 944 million dollar economy should do wonders for us, because I'm not going to sit on hundreds, you know, hundreds of millions in this case, um, while the economy is actually shrinking. I'm going to invest. It should jump up quite high. Okay, that wasn't that high, but yeah, one. It's still growth. Growth is growth. Now, scavenge for loot. Do not mind if I do. Now, the Kostroma pipeline. Political power plus 50, this will increase our liquid reserves by 50 million. Ah, I should have waited. Slightly increases trade laws, limited exports, policy effectiveness. The establishment of trade connections with the Bretons has proven very beneficial, allowing us an outlet for our excess production of both alcohol, as well as other, they said no, as well as other goods. But Brittany is far away, and transporting good there, goods there is in itself a risk. We need some of our closer. Kostroma, the city situated on the border of the German sphere, is perfectly situated. The porous border allows for the easy transport of goods into the realm, and while the Germans are not our friends any longer, their money is just as good as anyone else's. We will take it until the Empire is strong enough not to need it. Ass assumedly, then, we're using German money to buy shit off of German smugglers, the same guy and the same people Octan's dealing with. Because, other than that, like, you know, we're not, going to be able to we're not going to be able to use realms marks. Also, this, of course, uh, this focus is from before uh, Kostroma got annexed into Vologda. Um, they used to be, I think they used to be separate, and then they get they get annexed, but now they're just annexed from game start. Ah, yes, I remember this. The risks of doing business for the first time in decades, the river ports of Yatka bustle with trade. That's good. Stevedores move cargo. Stevedores are like teamsters, right? Exchanging the crude jokes of rough men, per, uh, pursers, sorry, along the, uh, the, where is the keys? The keys. Yeah, the keys. Yeah. Checking and rechecking manifest. Officials do the same, searching for smugglers and ensuring proper taxation is levied around them. All the engine of commerce hums. By the way, I'm going, probably going to be scratching my leg for the majority of this video. It's been ever itchy. It's been very itchy ever since I came home yesterday. I would have no idea why. Uh, all around them, yeah, the, from the Imperial Barge, modest as it may be. Tsar Vladimir looked on, watching his people work contentedly, allowing himself to feel accomplishment at having enabled them to do so, even as yet another migraine throbs at his temple. So focused, the Tsar did not notice his guest, a merchant captain, approach him. Majesty, the captain asked, are you all right? Uh, Vladimir waved from away. I'm fine, he lied. Thank you. He swept his arm outwards, gesturing to the docks. What was it you were saying earlier, Captain Pirates? Your Majesty came the captain's reply. It is known that there are river pirates downstream along the major riverine trade routes, uh, but I, uh, or both I and the other merchants, have requested more guard attachments uh, seconded from the Imperial Army. Uh, and here's an army, no armies. The Tsar hid his dismay strong enough to break through even the intense discomfort of the migraine. Securing such attachments would require forcing a compromise between Gul, Shulgin, and Solzhenitsyn as his head continues to throb. God damn, Ali, is it? Whoever he responds, yes, you will have them because I know what happens if I don't do it. We will spend 9 million. Very well. I mean, we're about to get 50 million, so we'll be able to almost wipe out that debt in its entirety. Also, how did that, how did we happen upon that debt? Where did that come from? We are running a surplus, 5 million. Okay. That's fine, that's exactly what it should be. Uh, oh yeah, Ooh, we'll get four more factories, hopefully. Um, maybe three, maybe one of them will go to consumer goods. But either way, an emperor's confidant. It was raining in Vietka, uh, though the sounds of a storm would normally be soothing it. It had become torturous for Vladimir. Damn! I find I find the rain on the window quite comforting. The fact that it's so bad now that even the rain doesn't comfort you, that's uh, 
It's a pretty bad situation. The Zara's frequent migraines had worsened as of late. Fucking hell, every second event is about these fucking migraines. Space and migraines. Space them out a bit. Space them out. Every droplet landing on his window was like a fist to the head. It wasn't enough that he had to deal with vicious shouting match uh, matches and dire butt reports during the day. Uh, could his nights not be his own thunderstruck again? Vladimir would find no respite in his chambers. He rose from his bed and grabbed his cigarette case. Maybe a walk would help. The halls of the Imperial residence were sprawling. Uh, if sparse in decoration, it was laughable to call it a palace and uh, an honorific that Vladimir had refused to bestow upon... Aha, fantastic. Had refused to bestow upon uh, his current seat of power, but it was his. Every splintered stairwell and every faded portrait. Would that be his legacy dust gathering on his likeness in some forsaken hall? Often that the Tsar's musings were interrupted by a familiar voice. Your Majesty rasped uh, Stepan Novikov with a well-practiced salute. Is everything all right? The hour is late. The newest and oldest... What the hell happened there? Something happened over here. What was it? Hmm. Hopefully Novus and Beers doesn't buy anyone. That's a weird mechanic. I dislike it. Now... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Was nothing if not vigilant. In the weeks since his induction, he had proven more than capable of performing duties that men half his age complained about. Vladimir questioned. Uh, or questioned. That 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 is. Oh, never mind. Vladimir considered his question: What harm was there in being candid with a man sworn to him? No, my head is fucking killing me. Shall I send for the doctor, Your Majesty? There was concern in his eyes, genuine. Vladimir waved a hand dismissively, drawing the cigarette out from its case and offering it to his venerable protector. No, but you can smoke with me, and you can listen. Uneasy is the head that wears the crown. Isn't it heavy? Is the head that wears the crown usually heavy? Either way, either one works. I wish this portrait had a crown. No. Also, let's close up the... Uh, infantry... Uh, Resultuist equipment. Yeah, I just... I, I don't buy that. Now... Raid on the Vyapka. Raiders fought off. Fantastic. The Raiders made their approach to the Imperial Trade Barge in the dead of night, with faces blackened and small boats riding low in the water, avoiding the barge's lights. They lined themselves with it and threw hooks up and over the side with the practiced ease of men who had performed the action dozens of times before. This time, however, things would be different. On the deck, one of the additional guards assigned by the Tsar heard a noise, and investigating more closely, saw the hook shouting in alarm. He kicked the hook away and began firing in the darkness. Uh, soon joined by both the barge's crew as well as other guards, when everything had calmed down and the sun began to rise, the guards saw that the pirates had retreated without casualty, but at least for once they had been denied their uh, prize, and word would spread that the Tsar's soldiers now protected the rivercraft. Fantastic. But the victory for the Tsar. We will increase popular support by a small amount, slightly increases trade laws, limited exports, policy effectiveness, political power plus 35, gain base stability plus 7.5%, that's huge. There is a river here, is there not? I believe there is. Yeah, and I believe um, at the moment, or rather, either at the moment or... Let me delete this from my... Side. I think there is a river here. Yeah, there is. At the moment now, um, Grigorenko is building uh, patrol boats with 85mm guns on them. So with him doing that, you know, to counter the pirates and us doing what we just did to counter the pirates, hopefully we'll eliminate pirates on the Vyatka River. That would be huge. Now we can do more stuff, can we? None of these do anything, that's fine. Peaceful unification plans, that's just a lie. Now a new hub of trade, we will increase economic strength by some amount. It slightly increases trade laws, limited exports, policy effectiveness, increase our GDP by 7.5%, that's big. For a total of 70 million. Now make sure to pay off that debt. There we are. Yeah, did you see that? When it increased from 1.2% to 1.3? See? I was trying to... I was talking about that where uh, if you pay off debt, your GDP... You can literally see your GDP growth increase. But um, when I when I got rid of debt, when I was trying to kind of make an example of it, it just did nothing. I was like, oh, well, that's fantastic. Not. Our property will begin to slowly improve. Our efforts to encourage trade have proven wildly successful with the identification and prioritization of key trade goods, the development of international connections, and the promotion of rapid and efficient arteries of trade among the Russian waterways. Vyatka has exploded in activity. The city's wharves are bustling. Merchants are moving ever larger. Carhoes, cargoes, and revenue increases month over month. However, the Tsar and those who advise him are always looking forward. A plan to establish Vyatka as a central trade hub for Western Russia has been put forward and accepted. Infrastructure will be vastly expanded, allowing for consequent expansions in trade and other forms of commerce and ensuring a dominant fu dominating future uh, position for Vietka as a city and contributing to a stronger, uh, strong financial base for campaigns to come. Fantastic. Ooh, we have even more stuff. Yes, I shall take new industrial equipment, please. None of these actually give me economic strength. No. Alright, that's fine. As soon as I find the one that does the uh, liquidate state assets, I will click that 
and also make sure to give myself the, the political power for it because I'm still going to claw back that economic strength that we lost that we because we shouldn't have lost it because that's not how trade deals work. Now, a riverine skirmish earlier today. A skirmish near the Kama River was reported. Uh, I nearly said Clements. No, elements of the Imperial Army stationed nearby to keep watch on the territory of the Fanatics and Perm reported seeing a small party fleeing Brotherhood militias and attempting to cross the river. Upon observing that one of the party was carrying a large American flag and additionally understanding the brutality of those living within Brotherhood territory, they moved to engage. Oh, look at that, we're already on the border. Fantastic. Uh, we will not back down so easily. Oh, but it's not where we needed to be. God damn it. As Brotherhood uh, fighters began firing upon the party itself, struggling to cross the river, our forces engaged them, killing or wounding several before the fighters retreated. Upon rescue and interrogation, the leader of the party provided evidence, identifying himself as an American, and requested entry for himself and his companions in the prince into the principality. He further explained that he was traveling across Russia on a journey of exploration, that he was most grateful for their rescue from Brotherhood forces. Um, Following confirmation that none of the Americans' companions were wanted by the Tsarist government, they were permitted to enter and proceed uh, in the direction of Izhevsk. Security forces will maintain surveillance until their departure. Steve is alive. An American here from the east all the way from Magadan. Get there in time, please. A visit to the front. Yeah, we are getting... Ah, God damn it. He's already gone. A visit to the front. One could never rest easy in the Russian anarchy. This was as true for the individual as it was for the state, and nowhere was this more apparent than on Vyatka's eastern border. Past a series of bunkers and trenches lay the vile fief of the... Ah, here he was his entry now. Of the Aryan Brotherhood. They had grown bolder lately, and though their advances had been checked each time, there were inevitable casualties. So it was that the Tsar and his entourage journeyed to visit the men that guarded the empire from unspeakable horror. Vladimir's advisors had protested his choice to visit the front. It was dangerous, they warned. Uh, they had protested even more to his choice of escort for the event. They did not think Stepan Novikov was fit to protect him. There were many younger and stronger men that could gladly, uh, or that would gladly give their lives for him. But Vladimir did not need the vigor of, of youth at the border. He needed a watchful eye and a careful ear. Stepan had both. The outpost uh, was ready for his arrival. Vyatka's flag flew proudly outside the barracks, and uh, at its foot, two score uh, soldiers. Okay, that's uh, two score. That's forty. Yeah. Okay. So it's roughly a platoon, I think. Yeah. Um, so at attention, the noble defenders that had repelled an Aryan raid only two days earlier. The Tsar walked past them one by one, offering a warm smile or a firm hand on the shoulder. It was a solemn affair nonetheless. He did not doubt that each man there had lost a friend to the front. As he continued down the line, he saw a soldier reaching into his pocket. A gift, then Tsar Vladimir, uh, then Vladimir was on the ground. A series of pops screaming. He tried to stand blood, so much blood. His own, no, the gunman was wrestled to the ground. A dozen men surrounded the Tsar, but not Stepan. Where was Stepan? In that moment, Vladimir knew whose blood stained his clothes. Damn. A lifeguard's final sacrifice. That is a sad event. Manpower minus one. Good job, Stepan. Your sacrifice will not be in vain. Now, over to this tree. Knights of Honor and Duties playing as Stepan dies. That's, that's perfect. Also, give me industrial investments. We need to get more production units. Now, entry 26. I assume we're winning this. Please. Please win. Okay, the combat with is 80, so hopefully these, uh, these guys reinforce no. Oh, it's quite a large battle too. So yeah, it's most it's pretty much our military versus their military. Nice. Alrighty. Entry twenty six, the Principality of Vyatka. Thank God for those soldiers saving us as we cross the river from for, uh, thanks for car beeps now the dogs are off uh, from those psychopaths in perm I never want to go back there ever again I also hope someone stamps them out for good Zoya agrees this new nation we find ourselves in Vyatka seems much more stable than the last few it's apparently ruled by Zar who I thought was dead at least that's what Mikhail told me all the way back in Cheetah ho ho we get perhaps they're related in any case uh, we're here now and not sur uh, surrounded by black clad murderers or literal slaves so I'll give thanks regardless we're headed south to the city of Izhevsk which Zoya says she passed through years ago on her journey eastwards it's certainly one of the more developed cities we've seen so far with enormous industrial plants and factories producing equipment of all kinds even so there seems to be a general malaise as if everything has faded slightly I'm not sure exactly how to properly describe it the one thing I have taken from the city however is a replacement for our horses now that we're in a part of Russia that actually has an extensive road network uh, as damaged as it may be, I was about to say, it probably isn't going to be that extensive. Using some of my remaining funds, I purchased a reasonably new truck, oh, oh. which uh, we shall use as we continue southeast towards Tatarstan. It should help accelerate this final leg of our journey considerably and provide a better means of escape should we encounter future problems, yeah. Well, I mean, the thing about horses is that you don't have to give them petrol. Though you do, you do have to give them food and rest. A uh, faded city, but safety nonetheless. Oh, I just spat all over the TV, god damn it. 
What is... It's all fine. It's all fine. How much for this? Focus on research. Our academic base will begin to slowly improve. We get plus 10% research speed for 60 days. I, I'm, only doing, I'm only doing that for the academic base, really. Uh, that's increasing. Okay, we need to get agriculture next. That's what I was going for anyway. Now, legacy of the empire. Political power plus 35. Gain base ability plus 5%. Decades ago, Russia the third Rome was a great nation. Then the... Uh, the oh, no, I already, I've already read this in the first episode. Yeah, but I can't need something to do. Uh, I'll read this, but if something else pops up, I will read that. Uh, it was a great nation, and then the Reds tore it down. They seduced our peasants with lies. They seized the great wealth of our... Actually, you know I'm not going to read this, because I have read it, and I want to read other things. Political power plus 25. Gain 1% based ability. 175 units of early infantry rifles added to the national stockpile. Good. I want to read this. Vladimir Kar... Karzevsky. I mean, and then... Hmm. I almost feel like there should be a, a H after that first Z. Karzevsky kind of rolls. Off the tongue better than Karzevsky. Now, political power plus 5%. Uh, division recovery rate plus 10%. Training time minus 5%. Head of government aristocratic conservatism. A veteran of both world conflicts. Wrought the Russian civil conflict and the West Russian conflict. Vladimir... Uh, Kar it is Karzevsky. See, I see. I fucking know. I'm getting used to, to grammar. But specifically, you know, Russian kind of grammar. But like, Latinized Russian grammar. Because I don't speak Cyrillic. Ooh. Aho. Let me read this. He rammed them and boarded them. Wow. But, um, yeah, I, I knew it was Karzewski. The, the lack of the H just threw me off. Now sits at the right hand of the Tsar himself, serving with Pyotr Wrangel's front as a major general and commander of the Drozdavsky division. He fled with Wrangel and his men into exile after their evacuation from Crimea. I just fucking realised... Why isn't Frankl in this mod? He got assassinated so young. Like, it, it, this, oh, this would have been the perfect mod to have Wrangle here. Oh my god. I never thought about that before. This would have been the perfect mod. And like, they also could have, they could have changed other things like Drozdovsky not dying, Markov not dying, Kapel not dying. They could have done so much with that. Damn. Like, they didn't have to have all of them. Like, it's 1962, you know, but they didn't have to have all of them, you know, still dead. Ah, that's such a shame. After their evacuation from Crimea, Vladimir bounced around Europe throughout the 20s and 30s. Aimlessly, he only truly gained a calling when Tsar Vladimir III proclaimed himself Tsar and agreed to work with the Germans. Moving to Germany, he soon sent an offer to the ROVS and was promptly reappointed as a major general and the newly revived Drozdovsky division. Uh, Vladimir served the Tsar faithfully, fighting with the ROVS and their German masters for over a decade. He even formed a close personal relationship with his monarch, becoming one of his closest political advisors. When the ROVS moved to break with the German lines and seize Vyatka during the tail end of the West Russian conflict, the head of the ROVS, Alexei uh, Alexandrovich von Lamp, resigned from command due to his disagreeing of breaking relations with the Germans. Interesting. Uh, this left Vladimir um, as the easy choice to succeed Alexei as leader of the ROVS and by extension de facto head of government of the newly formed Principality of Vyatka. Now Vladimir sits at the Tsar's side dispensing uh, advice to his friend. Vladimir also finds himself exasperated at the bickering of the emigre factions. Also I shouldn't have the game post. Um, but whatever may happen with them, the Tsar always has an, uh, will always have an ally and his most trusted friend. Interesting. Okay. Uh, it'd be cool if... Um, if uh, Alexei Alexandrovich von Lamp ran the RNSUV and the RNSUV, or, or mm, ah, see, see, like you could have a pro-German bundle of, well, I say pro, nah, pro-Germanism just wouldn't fly. But either way, it'd be cool to have someone run the RNSUV and have the RNSUV actually be a path. Ooh, fantastic! We've been given some more production units. Damn, we only got an extra two, an extra two power. All right, well, give me more assault rifles. Which is most useful? Ooh, the band. Yeah, there's a societal development. There. Yes. I don't think there's any here. Uh, no, there isn't a right down here then. Interesting. But yeah. Uh, uh, and then we'll do this first. Tangled web. Get some of the Byzantine bureaucracy. The fall of the old empire was accelerated by poor administrative capability, which then allowed for both economic malaise and red extremism to spread. Apart from the Tsar himself, we are seeing uh, this in the Principality. Uh, with many of the temporary government organs established years ago still in operation, we must learn from the past and not allow it to be repeated. Consequently, we will act decisively to untangle this web, clearing out redundant offices, formalizing needed government, uh, governmental services, and dispatching with wasteful excess. In such a way, we will strengthen our control over both, both our current and future territory. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh my god. Now, oh, now that I'm thinking about that, I can't stop. 
Imagine if Wrangle was in this mod. This would be the perfect mod to have Wrangle. Wrangle could be in it. Oh, I don't know, like, like, you know, a ton of the Whites died during the Russian Civil War. Markov died, Drozdovsky died, Kapil died, Karnilov died. Oh my god, they could have been in this mod. Like, like obviously not all of them are going to live until 1962. Many of them likely would have been assassinated by the Soviets now while they were in exile. But, you know, god damn. That's such a waste of, such a waste of opportunity. Funnily enough, I think... Ooh, our credit rating improved. Fantastic. We've gone from... We're already at fair. That's really good. I assume fair is our max for now. Yes, it is. That's fantastic. An extra 10% debt ceiling. Lower, uh, interest rates almost 2% lower. 20% less debt on our interest rates. Plus 5% stability. And debt now has 10% uh, more of an effect on our GDP growth. Oh, man. I can't stop thinking about that now. Oh. Frangle, Kapil, Drozdovsky, Markov... Kornilov. Those, the, those are the big ones, anyway. I think... I don't think... We, we mentioned many of, of the, the white officers' names in um, in this mod. I don't think they, they really get mentioned. I know Kolchak gets mentioned by... But Kolchak definitely gets mentioned by Rodzewski's. Yeah, by Rod, in a Rodzewski campaign. I, I know for a fact that... Denikin and Kornilov get mentioned in a game of Taboritsky because I've played them. Uh, because I've played that route uh, off camera. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, it, it would make sense for them to be mentioned in, in this run as well, but I don't know if it will be. Can't stop thinking about that now. That's of German Madagascar. Okay, good job with the. Uh, Ooh, our GDP is now over a one billion. Fantastic. Why is the game running like ass? I'm sure I don't have any necessary tabs open. I don't. Okay. Now, Byzantine bureaucracy, get working on this. But it doesn't have an event. Give me some time. Now, a Byzantine bureaucracy. Lieutenant Chardenko held his phone uh, to his, held, held the phone to his ear for the third time, waiting impatiently for his commander to answer. After what had felt like hours, he finally heard a voice. Gavrilov speaking, sir. It's Chardenko. As per your request, I've been. To, oh, I remember this. I've been trying to secure those rifles we purchased last week. I'm sorry to report, sir, that it's going to be a while longer before they'll make it to the men. Chardenko tried his best to mask his frustration. I don't understand, Lieutenant Gavrilov replied. The guns are in the warehouse. All you need to do is sign for them and be on your way. So what's the delay? Chardenko sighed. There, uh, they delay, sir. It's it's uh, the delay, sir, is that nobody seems to have the authority to actually release the rifles to me. Every agency sends me to another bureau, and every bureau sends me to another department, and all of them seem to require approval from one another. Uh, he took a risk. I've never seen so much red tape, sir. Over the telephone, Chardenko heard a grunt calm down. Some Gavrilov said, I understand your frustration. This is how things work around here. I'll make some calls, but you'll just have to go through the process until we get our guns understand. Gavrilov's tone was clear. Yes, sir. Chardenko replied, I will. As, Ga uh, as Gavrilov hung up, Chardenko sighed again. His work had only just begun. What a mess. You've paid for them. You should bust open those doors and take them. Plus minus 35. I want to spend this on anything else before I clip this. I don't think so. Now, the many shades of monarchism. Change in popularity of a liberal democracy, conservative democracy, and authoritarian democracy, 7.5%. Change in popularity of despotism, 2%. Change in popularity of bundle of sticksism, 5%. Slightly decreased political parties, one party state policy effectiveness, increases vote franchise, no voting policy effectiveness. Monarchism is not in itself an ideology, and as such, it tends to attract a coalition of those of many uh, different political persuasions. Our principality is no different, while all agree that Tsar Vladimir is the rightful ruler of all of, all of Russia. They disagree on how his rule should be expressed. Absolutists believes, uh, believe he should be unrestricted, while constitutional Constitutionalists believe there should be checks on his authority. Uh, public, uh, bundle of sticks, public controllists, and others also routinely present their own views. All of these forms of monarchy and a great deal more are regularly advocated for, but on can say which will eventually emerge to dominate the others. Ah, I'd love to have an RNSUV path. We, we don't have any bundle of sticks monarchy paths. The closest we have is the is the dictatorship of the White Army path, which is based around a military dictatorship. It's not a bundle of sticks monarchy. Bulgaria well, says it's really good. And, and then the closest thing we have here is solidarism, which isn't bundle of sticks, though it shares some similarities. Maneuver warfare, fantastic. And solidarism is Christian corporatism, Russian nationalism, anti, uh, anti, anti-redism, um, anti-Sovietism, I guess, is also on. They have a website, but I found it, and then Austin Mills 
uh, was asking me questions about about the NT, NT, NTS. The NTS? Yes, the NTS. And then I couldn't find the website that I was talking about, so I was like, a website exists, but I can't find it anymore. That was annoying. But yeah, they had, um, they had Vidalikov's face, they had Georgievich's face, and they had, uh, what's his face? Oh, one, one, one. oh yeah, they had the, uh, if you, I, I know everything, everything is, a lot of my knowledge comes from, uh, from video games, but if you ever played as the Sol Solidaris and Kaiser Redux, the guy, the Panslavist Solidaris, that guy, I think he's Slovenian, uh, but him, they also have him on the website, among many other people who I do not know. Now, utilize the Akrana at a modern age Krana, uh, uh, which grants reconnaissance plus 5%, encryption and decryption plus 7.5%, damage to garrisons minus 15%, gets them into the spy master, replace police service, uh, or uh, replace police with security service, effective change, daily physical power gain plus 0 0.05, civility plus 2.5%, encryption and decryption plus 15%, civilian intelligence others minus 15%, policy cost per capita plus 75%, create an intelligence agency. Despite the Tsar's righteous rule, there are those who would see him shackled, deposed, or worse. Every society has its dissidents, and they must be watched. The Ukraine of the Tsar's secret police was created to monitor and curtail the actions of those who wish the destruction of Russia. Though they failed in their mission, the lessons learned through uh, that failure have not been forgotten. To combat these dissidents, the Ukraine will be recreated, and the issues that led to their previous failure will be corrected. Once again, they will watch over and guard our, our state and our way of life, and doing so, the stability of our principality and one day our empire. It was all quiet until whatever that is turned on. Now it's off again. Good. Prepare a raid against the Order of St. George. I mean, oh, and it's gone already. Wow, okay. Razak wins the Malaya elections. Oh, yeah, that Azelska mechanical plant is coming in very handy. Producing loads of lovely AKs. Getting a decent amount of artillery guns as well, but we do need more. The next two production units I get will go straight into artillery. Hmm. Our property rate isn't doing so bad. Obviously, well, the property rate change isn't doing so bad. But that, that kind of baffles me. Our property rate is 73%. Let's look at Central Siberia and see what we can see there. Let's, okay, Vasilevsky, what you got? 73%! No terror bombing whatsoever and Central Siberian plan, but though it, pro it probably wasn't in Tanu 2 of it, to be, to be honest. Uh, probably raid, probably raid. Yeah, yours is 6%, that's much better. Novosibirsk is probably even lower. 54%. Tomsk is probably higher. Yeah, 63%. Kemerovo, ooh, I can't place yours. 62%, okay. Krasnoyarsk, you don't really even have content. 60%. Siberian Black Army, that way, anarchist, anarchist rebelism. 62%, alright. Akutsk is pretty low. Never mind, it was not. We just did really well. <laughs> 65%. Who is the lowest property rate in Western Russia? You gotta be shitting me with that loud ass noise. Ah, oh, damn it, I'm gonna have to close the fucking window. By master. There he is, Smyslovsky. Smyslovsky, yeah. Oh, Makrana, there we are. Take a quick look at this just in case it actually offers anything decent. Don't think it does. Pretty useless. Yeah, that's probably thought. Eight civilian factories they want as well. Wow. That's about the only thing, yeah, even the only ones that are useful. <sighs> and, and the crypto cracking, to be fair. And the Spy Master. The building was nondescript, uh, or nondescript, and the office within was unadorned. The man who stood in the doorway was unremarkable. The, the desk that he looked at was itself unembellished. A plain wooden block with a faded mat on top. I always have to turn this on down a bit. Yeah, it's nearly over anyway. Uh, 
that there was one element atop it that kept his attention, a small bronze plaque engraved with the name Boris Smyslovsky. To anyone else, this building, this office would have been unacceptable, but to Smyslovsky, the newly appointed head of the Tsar's crown, it was perfect. It was the culmination of decades of work, two conflicts, endless political machinations, and a most regrettable collaboration with the Germans besides. But all of that was in the past, and he only had eyes for the future. Uh, moving to sit uh, behind the desk, he began uh, picturing the items that would soon cross it. Maps, lists, numbers, and <laughs> he forgot the best one, names. Despite the mundane appearance of building desk a man, all three would soon become involved in some of the most momentous work in all of Russia. Uh, at, at that thought, Smyslovsky cracked a rare smile. Oh yes, he was going to love being the head of the Ukraina. Suspect number one, Fedor Vasiliev. Fyodor? Fedor? Now, Chernaya Rab Rabota. Rabota? Uh, in an unnoticed farmhouse just outside... Oh, is this... Never mind. Is, is, this, is this the start of the trail? Just outside Vyapka, the agents carried the bodies uh, to shallow graves that had been prepared, that had been earlier prepared. Now that the agents felt any sympathy for the men they had killed, after all, as Smyslavsky had told them, to be in the Ukraine, one had to be tough. Enemies of the state could be shown no mercy, let, uh, lest disorder spread. They had been turned uh, onto the men following one of many raids on uh, suspected red safe houses, where a coded letter had, after, been after being deciphered, led them to a warehouse. The other men had been found suspected of aiming to subvert the Tsar's regime and orders from Arkhangelsk. Like all committed revolutionaries, quote end quote, the men had resisted, but the agents knew their task and that uh, knew that everyone eventually breaks, and one of them did. He revealed the existence of a revolutionary cell in Vyatka with the ultimate goal of toppling the Tsar's government and establishing control for the Revolutionary Front before expiring. Uh, bump up this song. Uh, his companion interrogated separately, corroborated the story before exiting in similar fashion. After the agents buried the bodies they prepared, they report these men were just the beginning and there would be much more work ahead. Stability must be in short change and popularity of red is a minus one percent. Do we even have any red support? No, we don't. Well, what we do? No, it's only one percent. I didn't even notice it before, to be honest. Ooh, prepare raid against Comey, yes, please. Do not mind if I do. How goes the training? It's probably ready. You're just missing equipment. That's right, enough. anti tank and support. Yeah. Civil Rights Act of 1962. Now, Vyatka's confidential Valentin and Yevgeny agents of the Akrana were confused as to why they had been called to investigate a murder. The crime itself was not particularly rare in Russia and was typically the responsibility of the ordinary police. Yevgeny was the first to arrive and it took him only a few moments after, after proving uh, to the suddenly skittish police officers who he was to understand why he had been called. Arriving later, Valentin... Uh, Valentin understood similarly quickly the existence of a revolutionary cell uh, dedicated to the overthrow of the Tsar had recently been discovered. Now let me see where this raid must be. He didn't care against Siktivkar. So it has to be here against here. Alrighty then. <laughs> Let's see, move there. The dead man, an official from the Ministry of Finance, had his name flagged in connection to it, and having been assigned to the task force looking into the cell, they both knew immediately that there had to be a connection. Why this man had been killed and by who was still unclear. What to do so was an enormous risk on the part of the cell, and there had to be, well, yeah, there had to have been a reason, a reason uh, that could be identified, understood, and followed, a reason that could in time lead them to the resources and connections of the cell, and thereby destroy them. This could be important, but this could be more important than it seems. Maybe. I think it seems pretty fucking important. Vacuum tube computer, please. Having vacuum tube computing in Vyatka just seems just I don't know, it just seems weird in a, in a shattered Russia to have vacuum tube computing. It's just odd. Maybe it's just me. I oh, shall initiate that raid. You've been pretty good to give me money so far, so hopefully you'll keep it coming. Now, a nest of vipers. Although he hit it with the practice grace of a monarch who had sat through a thousand councils, Tsar Vladimir was exhausted. This made yet another of the many between the representatives of the most prominent political factions in the principality, namely Roman Gul, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, and Vasily Shulgin, had predictably devolved into little more. Oh, General Poggy. General not so Poggy. And they paid up again. These guys are fantastic. They've given us 59 million twice, I think, and now they've given us 66 million. Political power plus 25, gain one loot, and we get 66 million. Fantastic. We will throw that immediately into knocking off the debt. One point. Let me see if it changes. No, it did not. Very well. Now oh, I shall take. Did I do the agriculture thing? I did not do that yet. Wow, okay. New agricultural methods, please. That decision hasn't yet returned. Please tell me it's going to return. 
Uh, I want my... I want my economic strength back. Ooh, we connect Soviet power grids. Yes, please. Give me more power. No matter what happens, we'll get enough um, according to our current production units. And the trade situation has once again changed. Very well. Now... Uh, had predictably devolved into a little more than a shouting match. You would have a speak of liberalisation and democracy when we have barely secured our borders. Solzhenitsyn shouted with inc incredulity. Kuehl shot uh, upright in protest. I would, he cried, Russia's future is at stake and all you promote is the same thinking that empowered the Reds in the first place. As Solzhenitsyn's face purpled with rage, Vladimir felt a migraine coming on. The stress having aggravated it, but the sudden intervention from Sh uh, Shulgin refocused him on the meeting. My liege, he said respectfully, would you care to add your insight to this exchange? You have been rather quiet today. Vladimir cursed internally. Shulgin strongly supported him, of course, but the old man was never able to understand stand when he just wanted to be left alone after a long moment the Tsar spoke. You've all spoken well today. He used, he began using words long practiced. I will require time to consider them. Time I will take presently. <laughs> Very nice. Rising and departing to respectful glances from all those present. Vladimir retreated down the hall as muffled shouting resumed behind him. The migraine was pounding at his temples. Perhaps he could ask his physician for some relief. When would the bickering end? Also, uh, the respectful glances thing reminds me of Liz Truss's uh, curtsy to the king. I don't, I don't know what it was. It, 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 was, it was like a a quarter squat, I guess. I don't know. It was weird. It was weird. It, it, it was like the uh, the crouch animation of an NPC being cancelled. It was odd. When will the bickering end? Uh, soon enough, I suppose. Uh, Oleg Fedorov. Sofia Chibasov. Seducer. Uncle Trayson. Okay. Okay, you're also a seducer. But you're tough. Yeah, I'll take you so, please. And you can do... Uh, yeah, just counterintelligence, I suppose. Actually, do it in a death, just in case the the A B is, is the A B is trying to. Oh, never. Yeah, it doesn't matter, I suppose. Yeah, I won't be getting a new another agent, so I can't do stuff. Cause I need, I need. Do I need three to do it? Yeah, I need three operatives, and I, I, I don't think I'll be getting three operatives to, to build until now. Works. Yeah. No available slots. You get the first slot. Other slots. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I don't think I've ever had more than four... Um, more than four operatives. No, I don't think I've read the previous focus. The Great Game. In influence uh, peddling... Did I, did I read this either? Yes, I did. Uh, influence peddling is a component of any government and the Tsar's administration. Oh, damn it. And the Tsar's administration is no exception on a daily basis. Deals are made and broken favors or traded information is exchanged almost uh, or is, uh, information is exchanged exchanged amongst the many functionaries of our state. But there is a limit and the degree of these exchanges have recently threatened to divide the government to an unacceptable degree. The Tsar is not blind to this and he knows that such efforts distract from any eventual efforts to reunify the nation, but he also knows that to act to reduce it could uh, could engender the opposite effect. Prudence is required. He will therefore demonstrate his public displeasure with such actions, weakening the positions of those engaging in them without provoking conflict, but he will not forget, and when the state is more secure, there will be a reckoning. Scam to more loot, please. Now investigating the leads. Uh, Valentin and Yevgeny began their investigation by searching the house where the body had been found. Following the training they had been given by Smyslovsky's instructors, they first moved to determine the place and instrument of death. That at least proved simple. The man who had been shot, uh, the man had been shot from behind in the kitchen, and by judging, or by judging from the wound, a small caliber pistol. The casing was bagged and would be examined to determine the type and origin of the gun. The next step was to look for evidence that might connect the man uh, to his cell, uh, to the cell, in order to, in order to trove these suspicions of him that had arisen before his death. This was similarly uh, found in a box of letters amongst the many sent to the man from family and friends. One stood out sent by. Uh, Kachest Ven Venaya Dost uh, Dostavka, an import slash export company that operated throughout Western Russia, is indicated. Uh, it, it indicated that the man had been involved in moving unspecified cargo for them in and out of the industrial city of Izhevsk. Although such um, no, or another such letter indicated that he had recently facilitated the purchase of a small warehouse for the company here. Uh, company for the company here, Vyatka itself here in Vyatka itself, and had specifically ensured that it was in a lesser travel part of the city. Both were promising leads, but the agents had to choose which to follow themselves. Now, I believe both of these options work out, but I think if it can work out, but if you go to the warehouse, you might miss a clue. Um, so we're, we're going to try it out. And, and, and if I fuck up the whole thing, I will just reload and do it properly. And, you know, pick the right one. Now, the people's are Imperial Detachment, Physical Power Gain, Stability, Production, efficiency, Cap... That's nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People's hours are way better. Way better. I 
I shall be taking that, please. I'll have to read this first. Now. Form the Imperial Council, even a man as dedicated and righteous as our Vladimir cannot rule alone. Loyal retainers are needed both as territorial administrators and as advisors on matters of state. I think we did find it. Nice. Um, as such, an Imperial Council will be established, allowing for the collection and the application of the finest minds of the Principality to critical matter, to, to critical matters. That kind of seems like something that should have been established quite a long time ago. Those so identified with uh, will include eminent figures in arts and sciences, experienced government functionaries, high, uh, skilled military officers, and more. Their learned counsel will inform the Tsar uh, about anything to which he's not aware, and should he be incapacitated for whatever reason, they can be trusted to maintain a regency until such time as the Tsar's duties can be resumed. Political power plus 25, gain base ability plus 5%, our administrative efficiency will begin to improve. That's good. Now, warehouse clues. Following several days of surveillance, Valentin and Yevgeny concluded that the warehouse was deserted, so convinced they quickly broke the lock uh, on one of the doors and entered. Inside, the cavernous space was mostly empty, and so the agents began searching the office for shipment records. It did not take long for them to discover a lead amongst their many mundane manifests, a series of shipments between the uh, Kachest Venaya, uh, Dostavka warehouse, and locations in Zhevsk were found, all facilitated by the same man, uh, Koravani uh, Bryuko. Although the agents suspected the name to be false after noticing it in several other documents, they retrieved uh, they retrieved the Ukraine officers, officers to pour through official records. Before long, they discovered it again in a register of addresses. Without delay, they set out to find the man with the strange name. God, I could have sworn that. I think that actually might be the fail event. I think the successful event is that we find like a a false floorboard or something, or like a false switch, and we were able to find a, a hidden room with with more actual plans. Hmm, that's part of the trail. Let's see how it goes. Uh, yeah, it's all fine. Now the people's are gains the people's emperor, which grants daily uh, political power gain plus 0.1 production efficiency cap minus 10 percent production uh, factory output plus 10 percent for a full year. The Tsar is a man blessed and chosen by God to lead Russia onwards. He is just like his subjects, a Russian. He understands the needs of the common man and knows well that, but for the uh, chance of uh, divinity, he would be amongst them in the fields, the factories, or the social club. No longer will he remain in his palace. He will travel far wide. He will speak directly directly to petitioners. And he will demonstrate his love for the country and the people first hand. By doing so, he will inherently disprove the propaganda of our enemies who claim him, who claim him a distant, tyrannical, and uncaring despot. And he will bind our people together, leading them towards the future and securing peace and prosperity for all Russians, great and small alike. Deef the chief. Very nice. I didn't realize that was his uh, second time being in power. And he can be in power for uh, his second term being in power, and he can be in power for a third term. Now, searching the residence, the residence of uh, Colonel Vanny Brioco was anything but. Yeah, I've never even seen that first time in my entire life. I've never seen this now either. Colonel. Yeah, Colonel Vanny. Was anything but. The small house, though well kept on the inside, was nearly bare inside, consuming only the most bare necessities and little else. To the trained eyes of Valentin and Yevgeny, this meant one of two things. Either the man was an extreme ascetic, or more likely this was a safe house. Leveraging their training and experience, they began searching the house for clues, physical or otherwise, and it did not take long before they found a well concealed false floor panel. Oh, okay. Oh, that's where I was getting that from. Underneath, a ladder descended into a crudely excavated cellar. Okay, okay. I think I think this is the event where you might miss the the, the hidden floorboard. And take what they f uh, and, and inside they found what they had come for on a desk covered in maps and folders. What in particular stood out? Stamped confidential plan eagle. The papers inside the folder seemed to describe an upcoming sabotage operation against an industrial plant in Azevsk. Using materials shipped from the warehouse they had investigated earlier, knowing time was of the essence, the agents gathered up the folders and returned to the Ukraine headquarters they needed to report to Smyslovsky immediately. Finally, something concrete. Cultured court. Physical power plus 50 gain, base ability plus 7.5%. Our administrative efficiency will begin to rapidly improve. For generations, Russia's imperial court was known the world over for its splendor, its opulence, and the concentration of artists and intellectuals that surrounded it. If, it, if our goal is to revive Russia in body, we must uh, begin by reviving Russia in spirit and so re-establish its cultural and intellectual heart. We will generate and distribute generous grants to artists, poets, musicians, and intellectuals. We will invite them to our court and grant them citizenship in our lands and commission vast quantities of artwork, composition, poetry, and more. We will usher in a new generation of Russian culture and in time, Russia will once again be, uh, be known as a beacon of culture in the arts with the Tsar as its greatest patron. Beautiful. We're going to poach all that talent from all over the world. Now oh, the Yuzhev's connection. Is that, is, that, is that a map of our state? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I think so. 
The Izhevsk connection within the principality, the industrial city of Izhevsk, is well known for its many factories that persist even in the face of German bombing. Among them, none were more important than the Izhevsk mechanical plant, and as Valentin and Yevgeny arrived in the city, they knew that if the plot did extend here, the plant was likely to be at least one of its targets. Uh, the link between the deceased official from the Ministry of Finance and Izhevsk was one that had to be pursued regardless of any other obtained information, so the agents spent their day investigating every associate the man had, had had in the city. Other ministry agents were gently interviewed. Companies he had worked with uh, were contacted. An office he had worked in and searched, all to no success. However, there remained several specific factories that had been identified in his letters and which could still be explored. Perhaps additional leads could be found there. I'm going to pop a save just in case this goes wrong. Alert the local authorities to the sabotage plan, yeah. Most definitely. Now, focus on... Ah, here it is. It's back. Good. Liquidate state assets. Are, uh, we will increase economic strength by a small amount. This will increase our liquid reserves by 30 million. Good. Here it is, finally. We'll make back that, that economic strength that we should never should have lost in the first place. There we are. Now it's high. Good. Fund public services and do all this stuff. We can, yeah, we'll save up for more industrial investments. Fantastic. Where is this debt coming out of? We're running a surplus. Is it is this is it coming out of these focuses? Where are they? USFIP takes Manila. Suspicious activity deciding to issue investigating contacts of the murdered official and focus upon the identified plan of sabotage. Evgeny and Valentin informed the local Ukraine Bureau of the discovered plot. Together with local agents, they assembled and dispatched small teams to two many of the city's most important factories in order to look for suspicious activity and, if detected, take immediate action, joining one of the teams themselves. The agents found themselves watching one such factory. The primary target listed in the plan discovered in Vyatka with long developed and well practiced skills of surveillance. It was not long before Yevgeny first saw the figure first approaching and then entering the factory. Moving quickly, uh, Yevgeny, Valentin, and the support team followed as Yevgeny approached. The figure he realized that it was attaching uh, the, uh, that he was attaching a device to one of the factory's fuel tanks and drew his sidearm while calling out a challenge. The figure immediately took off running. Why would, why would you do that? Just shoot him in the head. Ah, damn it. As Yevgeny and Valentin began to give chase, the local agents moved to take care of the device, and Yevgeny gave thanks that the agents had been there to assist. He didn't want to think about what might have happened had they not been. So, see, that's good. So now we've, pre we've prevented the explosions. Catch him. We've already done one step out of two. Now we just need to make sure that we actually catch the guy because it's still a failure if we don't. Alright. The chase. Noticing Yevgeny's approach, the figure had taken off running through the factory complex using the myriad pipes, machines, and other obstructions to break a line of sight and uh, attempt escape. But if the figure thought such would work, he had clearly never been chased by the Ekrana, chasing the figure across the floor through an emergency door and down the stairwell beyond Yevgeny was able to, for the first time, catch a good look at his quiet man was young, probably not out of his 20s, and clearly very physically fit. Besides, fit enough that he was pulling ahead of the agent as Yevgeny emerged into the cold Zevsk air. Valentin followed, uh, following closely behind. He knew that he would have to make a decision as to the best way to catch the likely saboteur, not the save. Well, if he's clearly pulling ahead, then there's, there's no point in continuing to run behind him. Let's split up and try to cut him off. I think both these options can, options can fail, though. Oh, we got him! Hey, we got him! Fantastic! The saboteur caught. Hoping that he had made the right choice, Yevgeny quickly instructed Valentin what to do as he resumed his pursuit of the saboteur. As Yevgeny pushed himself and his body to the limit, the saboteur tried to create obstructions behind him to slow the agent down. That was a mistake. Yeah, you should never do that. Just keep running. It'll, 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 it, like, it slows him down marginally, but it slows you down more. As he ran, Yevgeny heard in his mind the voice of Smyslavsky cursing out another agent for doing the same thing. Trying to do so only slowed you down, you would say, or he would say, and often did little to hinder pursuit. As such, and despite the obvious difference in physicality, he found himself gaining on the saboteur. He realized he had a clear shot if he had wanted it, but he, they needed the man alive. He was their connection and next link in the cell's chain. He could not be allowed to get away, and as they approached and exited the factory's grounds, Yevgeny saw that he would not. Suddenly appearing in front of him through Herculean effort, Valentin barreled into the saboteur, knocking him flat and pinning him onto the ground as Yevgeny uh, rushed forward and pressed his pistol to the saboteur's head. Valentin prepared restraints. They found themselves smiling at each other. This is a major victory. He will talk. They always do eventually. Ha <laughs> fantastic. I think we get reassigned to dead-end jobs if we don't catch him. Valentin, Yevgeny, that is. Now I did all of that. Over to this. Yes, I shall be spending it on that. Give me industrial investments. You should keep clicking that decision. Production units are very hard to come by, especially once you get to the regional stage. Well, I suppose they're hard to come by at the, at the warlord stage, but 
Out of the combo without clicking that decision, that is. There we are. More artillery, my good man. Okay, now we're limited by our production units. The way it should be. The way it should be. Massive win for the Akrana. In a nation ravaged by civil conflict, espionage is a critical tool of the state. Equally important, however, is, these, is that state's defense against the espionage of others. Evidenced by their rapid, decisive, and successful action, clearly few were more skilled at providing that defense than the Akrana. The Ejaz case, as it became known, was later used as a textbook example of ex exceptional fieldcraft. Yevgeny and Valentin had acted using both training and intuition to rapidly pursue the leads obtained from investigating the deceased official. In, doing, in so doing, they not only prevented a serious terrorist attack at a critical manufacturing facility, but also captured the would-be saboteur for interrogation. Interrogation that soon led to the arrest of others members all of an experienced and dedicated subversive cell the destruction of which did much to protect the state while simultaneously binding and blunting or blinding and blunting the efforts of its enemies the agents themselves were richly if covertly uh, given the classified nature of the entire operation were rewarded both elevated in rank they worked to shape their respective departments increasing their efficiency and skill at defending the state and through such efforts the czar himself fantastic men must work for the emperor not against him increased security security service policy effectiveness well done men now the czar's speech the Tsar's frequent radio addresses to the Principality are naturally a great source of comfort for its citizens, demonstrating to them that their monarch carries them in his thoughts at all times. Following yet another German bombing raid, he has decided to give another. Unusually, he has taken an active role in its drafting, carefully determining both the content and method of presentation, and work has spread, and word has spread that this address is unlikely to be all, like all the others from all corners of our realm. The Tsar subjects huddle around radios, improvised or otherwise, and await the words of their sovereign. Beautiful. Always another job. Wet work was the term used for a number of the many less savoury tasks the Akrana were responsible for, thus becoming both skilled at wet work, whatever it may be, and even better at keeping the confidence of just what was done was the primary method of uh, acquiring the capital needed for internal advancement. This is the system that Yevgeny and Valentin did use and had, u and had used uh, to great effect in their careers. Sometimes the tasks were simple, intercepting communications, raiding suspected safe houses, interrogating denounced dissidents, and the like. Sometimes they were not. Sometimes men had to be uh, found, run to ground, and delivered to their superiors. Whatever the class will damage the uh, families or friends of their quarry almost to a one those men were never seen again yes the Akrana valued efficiency and Yevgeny and Valentin had mastered the art of being so through training practice and long hours of actual work what else could one call the feat of securing the critical lead in an offensive against a foreign sponsored insurrection a cell with every task completed with every enemy neutralized Yevgeny and Valentin advanced just that much higher in the Akrana's hierarchy their ultimate aim to serve and protect the Tsar no matter the cost or consequences there is always another job always our administrative efficiency will begin to slowly improve. That's our award. Fantastic. Illegitimate. That's accurate. Okay. Here comes Magadan. Oh, you've already gotten to this, eh? Oh, of course, I've got like an annex countries into countries that are actually coring them. I can, I, but I can just give them the army. That's fantastic. My countrymen, good evening. In these difficult times, I thank you for taking uh, the time to listen to me, wherever you may be. Uh, yeah, I'll take that to get rid of the debt. Um, I understand that many of you do not believe me, a man to be trusted, a man unconcerned with your welfare, and so for the next few minutes I ask to speak to you not as your Tsar, but as a fellow Russian. For almost 20 years we've been crushed under the weight of oppression. To the Soviets we were little more than cogs in a machine, and to the Germans we were, and still are seen as little more than animals. Now it is true that for a time I worked with the Germans. At that time I justified it uh, as using one enemy against another. If that was wrong, I can now understand why. Only a Russian can understand the depth of suffering and the degree of need of this country, of, the, of, this, great, of this great country, and, now, and I now will understand both. Uh, I now pledge to dedicate, dedicate all my efforts towards counteracting, counteracting that suffering and satisfying that need. You, we are all Russians. We are not cogs in a machine. We are not animals to be hunted. We are human beings who want only that peace and prosperity which so many others take for granted and together we will obtain it. I do not ask for you to blindly trust me for I know to ask a Russian for trust absent action is folly. I ask only that you watch me earn that trust. I ask only that you allow me to prove that status to which family and God has entrusted me. Russia is in shadow and I think none would argue that but together we will find the light and I ask that in time you trust me to lead the way. May God watch over us all. Well said, your Imperial Majesty. Very well said. We will increase popular support by a small amount. Change the popularity of despotism 2.5%. Gain base ability plus 3.5%. God, we've gone from in, from the minuses to 47% in such a short period of time. That's fantastic. 
Emigre support, very much needed. We will increase popular support by a small amount. Physical power plus 35, this will increase our liquid reserves by 75 million. The fall of the old empire resulted in the exile of hundreds of thousands of Russia's best and brightest to all corners of the world. Many of them... Oh, excuse me, took their riches along, and many others still have found wealth and success in their new homes. But they have not forgotten their old one. The Tsar still possesses contacts from his time spent living in Brittany. And through them, he would be able to establish contact with the most prominent of their number. Many of them desire to once again see the Imperial Eagle fly above a united Russia. And would be willing to provide both financial and political support. Now, let me monitor the situation over here. In case Radzev gets annexed without having his generals transferred. G2, yes, get that. Scavenge for loot, please. I caught in Azov. Let's see what kind of troop strength we're looking at. 35 to 50, 29 to 40, alrighty. Oh, it's liberation, yeah, I was gonna say you're still working on your tree here. You were probably not doing anything, no. Ready the troops, I hope you did your full stream, I'm getting the feeling you might not have done so. Here's was hoping you did most of it. You did, yeah, you probably, you definitely did most of it, but perhaps not all. Now, sunrise. It was a foggy morning in the lands of Vyatka when Alexander arrived in the village. His first stop was a doctor's house. Uh, when he had last been in the air, he had, he had taken hits while hunting a raiding band from the Aryan Brotherhood, and the doctor had saved his life after he had stumbled into town. The door opened when he, uh, before he had made it there, and he almost bumped right into the man. He recognized Alexander right away and was surprised when he placed a bag into his, his hands with a quiet thank you. Before the doctor was able to say anything, he was already down the street and nearing his true goal with a feeling of... Wait, 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 what? Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his name could be Alexander, I suppose, yeah. That's fine. I don't know many Germans named Alexander, but that is the Bogatier. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it was announced that it was the Bogatier. Uh, where was I? Um, with a feeling of trepidation, he knocked on Sophia's door and waited patiently for her to answer. From within, he heard the sound of muffled cursing before the door was pulled open. She was disheveled in the extreme, as she always was in the mornings, and did not register who was at the door for a long moment. Hello, Sophia. It, it has been far too long, he said. At once, her eyes opened wide, and she let out a gasp. Suddenly, he was pulled into a tight hug, his back popping as he gripped him like a lifeline. He was quick to return the hug, though not nearly as tightly, and kissed her on the top of her head. It is good to see you again, Sophia. Without preamble, she pulled him. Oh, here come the Japanese. And pulled him into the house and into a deep kiss before dragging him into the kitchen as he watched her dart around the kitchen and heard her voice chat away about the news out of Vyatka. He felt a smile stretch across his face. He was almost surprised when he felt a sense of true happiness flow into him for the first time in years. That night with Sophia in his arms, he, he slept soundly for the first time since the West Russian conflict. The nightmares refused to come and he felt closer to peace. Lovely. Perhaps happiness was attainable. It's a great photo. Japanese have returned to the Philippines following the success of the Balintowic Blitz and removing the Japanese puppet regime. It seems that Tokyo is willing to spill further blood to maintain its hold on the Orient's Pearl. 14th Army came ashore. Quickly captured the cities. Wait, so where's the actual Japanese? Oh yeah, it's here. Okay. That's really strong. I mean, we're outnumbered by the Reds. Probably even more outnumbered by the, by the USI, uh, USFIP. Oh my god, yeah, very much outnumbered. No. It's fine. The Bishop of Vyatka gets around the Bishop of Vyatka. Historically, the role of the our Orthodox Church in the Russian state was almost as central as that of the monarchy itself. Despite this, the relationship between the Tsar and the Church in recent years has been, if not antagonistic, fairly cold. Many within believe the Tsar insufficiently pious. This is beginning to affect his perceived legitimacy. A solution must be found, and quickly, the Diocese of Vyatka is currently vacant, and if a bishop was uh, appointed, it would, in addition to publicly, publicly confirming the Tsar's dedication to the Church and acting to reaffirm his bond to it, provide valuable moral guidance to our citizens, ever in danger of being led astray. Oh, another production unit. Always good. I will take more artillery, I believe. 
I believe I'll take Martin, right? Yeah, I'll take Martin, right, please. <clears throat> I wish that gave actual buffs. Having a good economy. Ah, we have to vodka gun guns. And there's, there goes the year old 14th army. And you're already in a conflict with uh, the NATCOMs. Oh, we can get more stuff. I'll take more industrial equipment, please. Now, let's... Oh, we don't have much time, but we'll read some of these of National Spirits anyway. The ones that we haven't already read. Yeah, Vyatka Vodka, we haven't read that. Factory output plus 5%, needed consumer goods at minus 5%. The Vyatka distilleries are in full operation, producing enormous quantities of high quality spirits that can be consumed at home, exported abroad, or used in medical and military settings as a high quality antiseptic. Although it might seem humorous to some, vodka is a Russian staple. Why is that humorous? And with thoughts of a uh, united motherland accompanying every battle consumed, all are inspired to work harder and waste less in pursuit of the dream of unification. That's good. Ah, the USFIP unites the Philippines! Imagine you're in the OFN now. Oh, not yet, but you are in the sphere. In the, in the American sphere. Mother Russia bleeds, indeed. Now, it's a book, isn't it? Bishop of Vyatka, the newly appointed Bishop of Vyatka, having completed the Divine Liturgy, stepped in front of the gathered congregation before him were the Orthodox faithful of the city representing all stations and walks of life. The cathedral was plain, its interior undecorated, but the cross and the altar were all that one truly needed. Friends of the bishop began raising his hands, compatriots of Christ, it is no secret that Russia... That Russia, this bastion of the Lord's true faith, is in great danger. We fight among ourselves, and he pointed uh, to the sky. The devil's own jackals rain death upon us uh, from high above. But not all is lost. Uh, there is one man, one faithful servant of God, who stands against the darkness like a beacon. That man is our Vladimir. I think this is really supposed to be a, uh, a comparison to a very similar event in in a, in a Mur, where Rodzevsky has his own um, archbishop. Uh, well, I, th I think he actually has a patriarch rather than just a, a bishop in this case. But like, basically, it's kind of it's very much a juxtaposition if I'm using that word correctly. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that works relatively well. Now, let's keep uh, close eye on this. That man is our Vladimir. He has blessed us, with, blessed us with his patronage, and his armies have protected the faithful as best as they are able, turning this city into a bastion of godliness. Even our congregation expands, bringing salvation, respite, and comfort to all those who need it. He took a step forward, looking at each of those present, and turned the Tsar will lead us forward and shined the light of the Lord into all the shadowed corners of Russia where it has been suppressed. The bishop lowered his voice, um, imparting finality on the words, So say a prayer for the Tsar, my faithful, every night, because he prays for you, he prays for Russia, and he prays for the grace of God to return to this land. Amen. That was beautiful. Gain base ability plus 5%, change the popularity of despotism 1.5%, increases religious right state religion policy effectiveness. Many more decisions. Invest in ordinance. I'll have to take care of that. We connect Soviet power grids, not yet. Most likely we will not need to do so. Now, Mother Russia bleeds. Uh, Gain base conflict support plus 7.5%. 120 uh, 1,250 units of Vyatka infantry equipment is added to the national stockpile. Gets event the law of the land. Russia is broken. Now I'm going to have to quickly check. I mean, you shouldn't be capitulating yet. You do still have. No, you don't have Tumakin yet, but you do have Rodzevsk. That should be enough for you. For not to not capitulate yet, it is good. Uh, Russia is broken from the European territories of the Far East. Its people cower in fear of bandits, raiders, and the warlords of the petty fiefdoms that one that are once great nation. You're saying that our once great nation uh, is reduced to this is a tragedy beyond measure. Tragedy beyond measure, but it is not yet beyond hope. Russia is no stranger to suffering or to steer, uh, starting over. It's supposed to be, yeah, it's supposed to be starting over, but it needs leadership strong and noble in order to do so, and, and we will provide it. Just as Peter the Great elevated Russia to its deserved position as a world power, so too will Tsar Vladimir. He will make it clear that order, strength, prosperity, and faith will uh, be returned to our country, whatever the cost. We will reclaim our birthright. Indeed. Well, it's not, it's not ours by right of our birth, it's ours by right of strength. The only thing that matters. 
Enough structure, serve somebody, that's all fine. No, there we are. That should be you gone. Yes, it is. And now I shall... Uh, no, that's the wrong thing. Country annexing tool. Uh, unmarked country annexing army and navy. If you if you have one, I don't think you do. But you know. And now here we are. Here we are. Fantastic. And now I shall tag over to Cheetah and delete the units that no doubt still exist. Uh, Rodzewski's new units. Um. You know, that'd be weird for it for uh, for them to keep them. Yeah, yeah, that's that'd be weird. But you should know how they're. Why is Seminov not dead? Okay, fantastic. Tirson is here. Uh, a Cotton is here. Uh, Shekarev is here. Agev is here. Fantastic. But why is why is Seminov still here? It seems like the, nah, that 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 is most definitely a bug. Most definitely. Yeah. That's very odd. And, and say give yourself some, some time here. Like, you know. No. 141,000, very strong. Tag. Uh, ah. Is it VYT? Hopefully that'll tag us over to the right person. Or right country, rather. Stateless. Yes, it is. Fantastic. Oh, see if Hervitz is here. At least he should be. I believe... Yeah, I believe he is here. Nice. Now we shall raid Ust uh, Sosalsk. You want to focus on research, give me more academic base. Yeah. Where this did I not? I did. Good. All right, Zara's infantry divisions. First of all, I'm just. Now, there's no point changing the templates just because um, it'll only cost me money. We do not need our army, a big army yet. That is still off the ways. Also, yeah, yeah. But all right, lads. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, if you did, if you did, please and see. Uh, fucking hell, my grammar has gone to shit. If you did, please consider leaving um, a like, a comment, as well as, uh, as yeah. What, what, what is it that I say? If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. I shall see you in the next episode where we shall finish off this train. Hopefully do the one after it as well. But if, I don't think... Is it straight after? Is there a second tree in between, the, in, the, in between this tree and the one that I'm thinking of? The one where you choose between a big army or a professional army? I'm not sure. But either way, I shall see you then.